What's up, guys? Um, I'm a little late on this game reaction, um, but I've been really, really busy. I was able to watch the game, um, but this video is going to be a little bit longer. Um, you know, so I'm going to be closer to 30 to even 40 minutes because I'm, I'm not really going to talk about the coaches and GM side. I'm just going to talk about what I think the Lions should do as a team standpoint. Um, first off, let's talk about the Titans game. As you guys are well aware, we lost 45-26. Um, and we were eliminated from playoff contention after that loss. You know, because our best record would be 7-9. and nine, And if the Arizona Cardinals go 7-9, and nine, well, uh, it, it, just, it just wouldn't work. I tried on the ESPN thing, but it just didn't work. And even all the uh, NFL people were saying that we were eliminated officially. So, Lions are not making the playoffs this year. Which, in my opinion, I'm kind of glad we're not. Because, let's say we did somehow manage to make the playoffs at 8-8 and eight or even 9-7 and seven and won out. And, you know, we'll be like the 7th seed or even the 6th seed. All we would do is get killed in the first round, in the wild card round. I mean, with the defense we have right now, I mean, I know we have a really good offense, but defenses win championships. And if you can't stop anybody, I mean, no matter how good your offense is, you're not going to score every single drive. I mean, you know, even the Chiefs don't score every single drive. Even the Packers don't score in every single drive, and they have one of the best offenses in the game. Even the Titans have one of the best offenses in the game, and they still don't score every drive. So... Um, but yeah, with the injuries we have on our defense, how depleted we are, how terrible our defense is, it's kind of better we don't make the playoffs, because all we would do is just get embarrassed in the first round. So, if I'm the Lions, I would bench Stafford for the last two games, don't want to risk further injury. He's getting older. I know he's tough, but like I said, he's getting older, so bench him, start Chase Daniel. I mean, actually, he kind of surprised me when he came in, when he ran that little 12-yard run. He's a little faster than I thought he was. I mean, he's older too, but he's a little faster than I thought he was. A little faster than Stafford. But, you know, I'd start him or uh, that Tiamo guy. Um, you know, but I wouldn't play Stafford. Even if, he, even if he wants to play, season's over. We're not going anywhere. You know, players, backups, give him some playing time. Um, hopefully lose out. I know that's, you know, kind of terrible mindset coming from a fan. But, I mean, if you lose out, you get a top 10 pick. And right now, we're still kind of in rebuilding mode. So, um, we need to, you know, get a top 10 pick. You know, there's still some, you know, there's still going to be some talent in the later top 10 picks. Um, you know, I would go, you know, if we lose, I'd go 5-11, and 11, depending on how, how it goes. We'll probably get the 6th, 7th, possibly 8th pick overall. Um, and, uh, Jamar Chase is going to probably be gone, but I would sit, I would heavily think about in the first pick in the, you know, in the first round, depending on who's available, I would either go with, you know, Devontae Smith, you know, from Alabama, um, wide receiver, uh, depending on what we do with Kenny Galladay, we'll probably franchise tag him. Um, or even think about drafting a quarterback. I, you know, I was opposed to this before. You know, my friend Tyler can tell I'm opposed to this, but, you know, now that I think about it, you know, obviously we're not getting Trevor Lawrence or probably even Justin Fields. But there are still some pretty good quarterbacks coming into this draft. Like, I think Kyle Trask, Kyle Trask from Florida is going in the draft. Mac Wilson from BYU is going in it. Um, <clears throat> Mac Jones from Alabama, I believe, is going to go in it. Um, so there's still going to be some good quarterbacks out there. And, you know, I wouldn't be upset if we picked one of them to be, you know, to be not a starter yet because we saw Stafford, but like to be under Stafford for a year or two, learn under Stafford because Stafford, I mean, he's not the best quarterback to ever play the game. We all know that, but he's not the worst. I mean, he is talented. He has an arm, um, and I think he'd be a good mentor to a person, you know, and then after his contract is up, don't give him any contract extension. Let him go to another team. And then play whoever you draft at quarterback. You know, I wouldn't mind going that route. But we'll talk more about that later. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't mind a wide receiver either. Because depending on what we do with Kenny Galladay, we'll probably franchise tag if we can't get a deal done. But Marvin Jones is getting older. We're probably going to lose Danny Amendola. I know we have Cephas. But, you know, uh, 
Devontae Smith is one of the Heisman candidates. So, um, <laughs> I, I wouldn't try to pass that up. He's kind of explosive. And he was for, very explosive for Alabama. Um, although I wouldn't mind Mac, Mac, uh, Parsons, I believe is Micah Parsons from Penn State, the linebacker. Um, but yeah, if I was at the end of the season, let's we go five and 11 and I'm the higher GM. The first thing I do is hire a head coach. And the head coach, like I said, my top three were Salea, Brady, and Bevel. Now I don't under, now I don't agree with Bevel's decision to fire a special teams coordinator because we've had one of the best special teams in the league. And even though he went rogue and uh, well, that's the report he went rogue and called that fake punt. You know, we could have won that Titans game. I mean, we could have. There were there were key things in that game that we didn't do that we should have. Like, you know, in the second quarter, we were at the one-yard line. Our DeAndre Swift fumbles after trying to jump over the line for a touchdown. I mean, yes, I know that we got a safety in the ensuing drive. We got a touchdown on the next Lions drive. We, you know, we missed the extra point. But still, I, mean, I know that's more than what, you know, that we would have gotten if you would have scored. But if you were to score... That would have been the that would have changed the whole complex of the game in the second quarter, I believe, and then in the third quarter, that same fumble. You're driving. You're down by nine. You need to get something going early in the third quarter, and you were. You had a field goal in there. You were able to get back in one score. You had to be careful with the ball. T.J. Hawkinson. I understand he was trying to reach for that first down. I mean, I would have to, but you got to be more careful with the football. You got to be more careful. And, uh, and it wasn't punched out. He just lost control. Um, so. And that, we could have got points there. I think, you know, if we held on to that ball, we probably would have scored a touchdown just by the way our offense was playing that game. I mean, both offenses put over 400 yards. So, I mean, both offenses were there. Um, but, yeah, though that was crucial. But then after we were able to get it within six, 18 to 24, we had a, it was like late in the third quarter, I believe. Uh, or maybe, I don't know, like six, five minutes left. And we got Titans to a quick third down. It was third down and 12. We needed to make that stop. We didn't, but we we really needed to because to get our offense right back out there to take the lead, and again, that would have changed the whole game, but we just couldn't make the stops. We couldn't make the plays we needed to. And that just shows you how the Lions' seasons went, went, and the Titans were just the better team. I mean, yes, we were outmatched. Did I expect to lose? Yes. Am I surprised about the result? No. But, you know, watching that game, we really could have won that game. Same with the Packers game. We really could have won that game. But it just, it all comes down to the same thing. Our defense cannot stop shit. Excuse my French. But that is the that is just the plain answer. We Our defense the whole year could not stop anything. We couldn't force any turnovers. We couldn't stop them on third down longs. It's just, we really need to revamp our defense over the next few years. It's going to take a few years, I think. It's not going to take one offseason. I mean, Matt Patricia really destroyed our defense. I mean, we really have to rebuild the entire defense from basically scratch. I mean, we have some good pieces. We have Jeff Okuda, which I hope he can he can um, develop. I mean, Tracy Walker, he's developing quite nicely. Uh, Amani Warrior, he is doing fantastic. Um, uh, John Penasini, he's he was been he has been a nice surprise. Romeo Lacora has been having a breakout season. Hopefully, Julian Lacora's brother can you know get in there. I mean, we have some talent, but it's, we really need to get new decent quarter who actually knows how to do stuff. <laughs> Plain and simple, you know. If anyone should have gotten fired yesterday or the day before, whenever a special team coordinator got fired, it should have been Corey Undelin, our defensive coordinator. Not our special teams coordinator. So, I mean, I like Bevel, and, you know, I still think we should give him a heavy consideration for head coach, but firing our special team coordinator, that is a questionable decision. But, I don't know. I'm not the Lions organization, and I don't know what's going on. Maybe it was, there had to have been something more going on, I believe. So, you know, that's not saying. So, there's always that possibility. But, yeah, if I was Lions GM, I would hire for a head coach. And my head coach, if I had to choose between those three guys, I would choose Bevel. Here's the reason why. Yes, I know I just said I questioned that decision to fire that coach. But if you look at it as an overall standpoint, it's the time he took over. Yes, we're one and two. But the way we've been playing in those three games with Bevel, it 
it shows we actually look like we care about the game, we are prepared for the game, and we're ready to play. I mean, you can be all ready to play and still lose because you just play a way better team than you, and that's what happened with the Lions. But it just showed we were better prepared, more enthusiastic, have more energy than we have been in the past three years. So, and the coaches like Bevel. I mean, not the coaches. The players love Bevel. They love him. And they love playing for him. They want to fight for him. You know, you want you want a guy who players want to fight for you. Because if you do that, you're going to play well. And, um, and you see, he hasn't had a full season as that coach. He's going to have five games. I mean, you know, even though we're probably going to lose out and go one and four. But it's just five games. I mean, what if he took over at week three? What would a record be? I mean, you, you don't know. Um, but, you know, I... I'd, I'd, I'd hire Bevel for two years um, to give him a trial to see what he can do in two years. Um, and then I would I would try to build around what he wants. Like, if he wants to be under Stafford, fine, I'll build, I'll build around Stafford. Like, you know, I, I will build a team, hopefully, to get us a championship. You know, I would do that. And then, you know, I would fire the defensive coordinator. Well, I mean, that's their Bevel job, but I would tell him, you need to fire a defensive coordinator. And then I would hire, well, I doubt Saleh would want to go from the 49ers to the Lions to be defensive coordinator. I think he's going to be looking for a head coach, head coaching job. But, you know, I'd hire a better defensive coordinator that actually knows what they're doing and that has been successful. Um, I would hire a new strengths and conditioning coach because we really need to get our injuries under control. Um, but, yeah, I would go out there and spend money. The money I have, I would go out and spend. Um, or at least try. That's something I feel like Bob Quinn just didn't try to do. I mean, there were some players out there that we could have gotten that on the defensive side. I can't remember who they were. I mean, but I mean, it just it just seems like he doesn't try. I mean, if you offer him a contract and he declines it, that's one thing. But if you don't even try to offer him a contract, that's another. So I would have to try to get, you know, superstars here. And, you know... I may, I would also consider Saleh. I know I said I'd pick Bevel, but I, I probably also would consider Bevel, not Bevel, uh, the, the, the Saleh, because I would also see if Richard Sherman will come over, come over here, you know, because he said that he likes Saleh, but I doubt it. Um, yeah, that's what I would do. I would try to, you know, depending on who we draft in the draft, I would build around probably Stafford. Because, you know, he's getting older. He still has a good five or six years left over. So, I mean, that's enough to build the team around. But I would really focus on defense because our offense is not the problem. Our offense is not the problem, and it usually is not the problem at all. We need defense. We need a defense that they can actually stop people on third and longs. They can actually create turnovers. That can hold teams under 10 points or 17 points. You know, like... But, you know... I'm a fan. I can only speculate. I can only say what needs to happen. You know, what's going to happen is going to happen. Um, I don't know. Uh, this Saturday, we play the Bucks. Um, so, there's that. That's all I have to say to that. Uh, I probably won't come out and say, I mean, I know I've said I should, but. Quite frankly, the last two games, I'm not going to make keys to the game because I'm just going to watch the game just for watching the game. Whatever happens, happens. If we lose, we lose. If we win, we win. Plain and simple. I'm not going to be, you know, say, okay, we really need to win this game. We really need to win this game. Because we don't. We're out of the playoff race. So, the keys to the game is lose but play well. How about that? <laughs> um, however... There's some other news around the league, you guys probably already know. The Jets. The New York freaking Jets. Went into L.A. to face the 9-4 Los Angeles Rams. As an 0-13 team, they go into L.A. and knock off the Rams. I mean... No one expected that. And it looks like the Jets just lost Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> it looks like Trevor Lawrence is going to the Jaguars. 
Jaguars because the Jaguars after Sunday have, you know, almost secured the number one pick. Now, yeah, there are two games left in the season. And if the Jaguars win one of them and the Jets lose out, the Jets will get the first overall pick. But as of right now, the Jaguars have the first pick and the Jets have second. So the best quarterback they can get is Justin Fields. Now, Justin Fields is not a bad quarterback, but he's no Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence is a one-time in a generation quarterback that it, it like I said, only comes around, it's rare. So, um, <laughs> the Jets can't even tank right. That's funny. But, I mean, I guess I shouldn't be laughing at a Lions fan. Whenever we try to lose, we win. So, okay, there. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> but, you know, going back to the Lions, I kind of figured our season was going to be crap as soon as DeAndre Swift dropped that game-winning touchdown against the Bears in week one. I was like, yep, there's the there's the story of our season right there. It's going to be another one of those seasons. I think if he caught it, our season would have been better. You know? Just saying. I think, you know, once he dropped that pass, the season was over right then and there. Even though it was 15 games to go, our season was done right there. So, um, <clears throat> but DeAndre Swift, even though he's had some dra drops and fumbles, He's a rookie. You gotta give him some slack. And he's been a hella good surprise. I mean, he is, he is, I feel like, gonna be a good running back. I think he's gonna be a star. I mean, he has shown he can... I, 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 love, I, I like DeAndre Swift. I really do. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we draft the running back in this draft. Not in the first couple rounds, maybe in the later rounds. Because we're gonna lose AP, probably. Um, carry on Johnson... We may trade him, and, you know, we need someone to back up DeAndre Swift. Um, but it is what it is. Um, I can say only what I want to happen and what I think is going to happen, but in all in all, it's all going to come down to what the Lions want to do. You know, Sheila Ford, this is your test. This is your chance to show us that you actually care about the team. She says she does. So let's see if she can prove it. That's what, you know, that's why I'm saying prove it. Prove that you actually care. Get us a team that can get us into the playoffs and actually compete. Year, it, it, not just one year, but for you know, multiple years. You know, show us that, that you can do that. So, it starts by hiring the right GM. What I don't know. I mean, a lot of people love Ed Dodds from the Colts. I like him too. Um, so, I mean, I wouldn't mind him. Uh, Louis Riddick. He's a guy that I wouldn't mind giving a test, but he has no experience, so he wouldn't be my first choice or even third choice. Um, I would choose someone from the Chiefs organization, the Colts organization, you know, the Bills organization, because there are people in those organizations that have experience in that, that. So, you know, choose someone from a winning organization that knows how to win, who knows how to get talent. You know, Ed Dodds, I think he's the one who draft who wanted to get Andrew Luck and look what he did. I mean I know he retired early, but Andrew Luck was a hella good quarterback. He just got got the injury bug and his body couldn't take it. So he knows how to get talent. So you want to get someone who knows how to get talent. And then you know he's well liked around the league. That's what you want. You want a team who gets well liked around the league and get a good coach who is also well liked around the league so you can get the players. You know, it all comes full circle. Get a GM that's well liked around the league, that gets a good coach that's well liked around the league, that gets good players that's well that likes the coach. All comes for a full circle. Because if you have, if you don't have a good coach, okay, you can have a good coach, but if he's not liked around the players, you won't get the superstars. I mean, superstars, yes, they want the money, but they also want to play for a coach they respect and like and want to play for. So that's when the Lions, you know, because when the Lions do offer the superstars contracts, they decline them because either they have the coach they don't like, like Matt Patricia, or they just don't want to play for the Lions. Which is, I understand them completely. I mean, do you want to play for the Lions? Probably not. I mean, with our history, until we are prove, until we can prove that we can compete with the league and have a chance for a Super Bowl, I don't think we're going to get any superstars. So, but um, like I said, Sheila Ford, it's all on you. Spotlight's on you. Do you care about the team? Prove it. Get us a winning team that can make the playoffs. If we're you know, multiple years in a row. Or at least multiple years in a five-year span. How about that? Got five years. See if we can make the playoffs two or three times. They can actually compete. So, Sheila Ford's all on you. 
Another story. Last night, the Steelers have lost their third consecutive game after starting 11-0. And two other losses came to the Washington football team, who are, I'm not saying they're a bad football team, but they should have they should have won. But Washington football team has been a surprise this year. And they just lost to the 2-10, now 3-10 Bengals. Steelers are overrated. They're overrated. And I guess Juju and Schuster got what he was coming to him, dancing on that logo for a TikTok. Yeah, they, then he got blown up. So it's going to be a meme. It's going all around the league. Social media. You don't go into someone's uh, stadium. No matter how bad they are, you don't go dancing and disrespect them like that because... They're going to see that, and they're going to get energy from it, and they may beat you, and that's what happened. I feel like the Bengals got pissed off from what Juju did, and they went out there and said, okay, we're going to beat you guys, and they did. So, <laughs> you don't go into a stadium that's not yours, and you disrespect them no matter how bad their team is. Because it's going to end well, and not it's not going to end well for you. I mean, even halves in the college level, look at Devin Bush. I believe it was. He went into Michigan State and tore up the Spartan logo in the on the 50 yard line. Michigan ended up losing that game. Yeah, and Michigan was the better team in that one, I believe. I, I believe like we were like six and one, I believe, and I don't know what it was, but it was we were the better team, record wise. And Michigan State saw that and got energy and beat us. You don't go into another person's stadium. And disrespect them like that. You just don't. You just don't. Bad things happen when you do that. Usually. Um, the Detroit Pistons season is going to get underway. Today, actually. No, tomorrow. Tomorrow. They officially kick off their regular season. They go to Minnesota, I believe it's an away game, and face against the Timberwolves. It's a 72-game season, I believe. I want to say it's a 72 game. I can look it up. But I'm going to start doing Piston Talks. Um, and uh, I'm really excited. I mean, I'm not saying our team's going to go to the finals. I, You know, it's not not going to happen this year only unless a miracle happens. But I feel like our team's going to be a little... going to be better than people say they are. I feel like we have a chance to, you know, mess around and get the 6th, 7th, or 8th seed and make the playoffs. You know, if, health, if, if Blake Griffin and Derrick Rose stay healthy and they play at a high level with the, rook, the young talent we have, you know, I feel like we're going to be a way better team than people think we are going to be. And uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what our team can do. I mean, I know we're not going to make the finals, but I'm excited to see what our team can do. You know, we're in a step in the right direction. Hopefully in a few years we'll be a contender again. So, and Troy Weaver we trust. And Dwayne Casey we trust. And Sheila Ford, I am trusting again. I'm always going to trust him. So I'm trusting Sheila Ford, and hopefully she makes the right decisions. If not, well, we know the story. What's going to happen then? Same old lions. But, yeah, um, thank you for watching. I hope this wasn't too long, and uh, I'll see you on the next video, which will be tomorrow, either tomorrow night after the Pistons game or the next morning. Yeah. Have a good day, guys.